Welcome back to 40 TV. I'm your host, 40. Today, let's talk about chroma key or green screening in Final Cut Pro X. A friend of mine asked me to do this tutorial, so yeah, here we go. Um, quick note before we start. This video is not how to properly light your green screen. I do realize the green screen in the back has creases, folds, and is not lit properly. That isn't the point of this tutorial. The point of the tutorial is keying out your subject. Um, I just threw this example clip together really quickly and also figured that if it wasn't perfect, that could show the power of the keyer inside of Final Cut Pro X. So let's begin. I have a clip loaded here with me sitting inside in front of a green screen. I'll navigate on over um, to the inspector, click on it, and notice that I've already set up a garbage mat. If I click on this, it shows that the green screen didn't extend fully um, or to the full frame. So I created a mask and I haven't done it on this side, let's do it together. If I click on my effects browser button here and I scroll down until I see King, I'll find mask. If I drag this onto my clip, it applies a mask and I can zoom out to better work with these handles. I'm gonna drag this handle over here, this one over here, and I'm just trying to have this portion select the part that was outside of my green screen. So I'll go ahead and grab that, come back over to the inspector and click on invert, invert mask. Now we have a garbage mat applied to the left hand portion of my clip. I'll scroll down, if I click on color, it gets rid of the handles and we can see we have two garbage mats applied to our footage. So next thing, inside the King folder in the effects browser, I'm going to scroll up, find keyer, grab it, and drop it on my clip. When I do so, it automatically keys out the color green in my clip. You can see that there's some areas that didn't grab so good. Well, that's because the green screen wasn't lit properly. So let's talk about how to fix that. If I scroll down, I'll see I have three different view modes. Right now we're in uh, composite by default. There's also a matte as well as an original view of the clip. So the matte allows us to see what's being keyed out and the original view will allow us to select what colors we want to sample. So I'm going to click on sample color here. That allows me to click and drag within my viewer to sample the color green or whatever color I'm planning to key out. Well, the cool thing is if I hold down shift on my keyboard, I can click and drag and add more colors to this selection. That's going to be helpful in this particular situation because this green screen wasn't lit uh, as well as it could have been. So I continue to hold down shift, continue to select more portions and sample more colors for this key. If I switch back over to the composite mode, I can see it's doing a much better job now. Alternatively, when I click on the mat, I'll notice that I have some holes in my mat. That will be illustrated further when I drag a background behind, um, behind my green screen footage. So if I scroll back over and click on the composite view, I'll see with inside my shirt there's tons of little holes. Although with the peace sign, that maybe makes it look a little bit tie-dye, so maybe not totally bad, but we can fix that. I'll switch back over to my matte view, and I know I've already played with this clip, and a value of two for fill holes does the job. Next thing, this edge distance will further refine your edge. Less is more in this particular situation. When we drag it up all the way to 25, we can see we're inducing some issues in our edge. I found that in this particular clip, a value of two works for me. You're gonna to wanna to be in your uh, composite mode and further zoomed in to decide what value is gonna work for you. Looking at edges to make sure it's not screwing up your edge as you adjust this edge distance. You can see right here in the shirt as I drag this up, it's screwing up my mat. I'm gonna press Command Z to go back to a value of two and continue. Our spill level, this is going to control the amount of uh, green spillage happening depending on how far your subject is away from your green screen. Typically the closer the subject is to the green screen, um, the more amount of green light is spilled onto the subject. Adjusting the spill level will compensate for that. It's defaulting to the value of 46 and that's working just fine. In this particular situation, you can invert your mask. I'm going to zoom out so you can see the whole image. If I click invert, then it's keying myself out of this footage and not the uh, background. 
Obviously, this could work if I was trying to do some type of effect inside of my body. Maybe I had an aquarium going and I wanted to look like a walking aquarium. Then I can use this effect in combination with another green screen effect applied to another clip to key out the uh, background. And then I'd be a walking aquarium. Next, you have three different um, options within your keyer. Color selection, matte tools, and spill suppression. All of these um, options allow you to further refine your matte. I'll talk about that in a more advanced video. For now, let's just talk about light wrap. And let me also uncheck this box for invert. What light wrap does is it looks at the pixels nearest your edge and it artificially bounces light onto your foreground subject on the edge pixels. In this particular situation, when we drag the slider to 50 to the extreme, you can see that it started to get a lot of artificial light on all of these edges. I can zoom in further so you can see this exact point. You see what I'm talking about? In this particular situation, less is more. Maybe a value of four works. We drop the intensity. So now we're just spilling a, a little or we're wrapping just a little bit of light around our foreground subject. I'll zoom back out. I'll click on color to get rid of those boxes. I'll scroll to the beginning. As you can see, the background rendering has been going as I've been talking. So I'll go ahead and preview this by pressing the space bar. And as you can see, this mat didn't turn out that bad. Obviously for broadcast quality, I'd want to make sure that I lit my green screen properly. If I get enough comments requesting a video on how to properly light a green screen, I'll make sure and do that tutorial in the future. I hope you guys like this tutorial. To further uh, sell your effect, um, you may want to add an adjustment layer or select both of these clips and create a compound clip and apply a color correction to that compound clip. If I select both of them and select new compound clip, we'll call this test clip one, press enter. Now this new compound clip, I can go ahead and add an effect. Maybe if I scroll over to looks and maybe I apply this combat effect. Now this color effect is being applied to both myself and the background to further sell this um, key. Also, I can change my sizing. If I double click on the compound clip, come back in. If I select my, uh, the clip where I'm part of the, gr or I'm the green screen, and I scroll down to scale, I can scale myself down. And maybe this further sells the clip because I was sitting on a chair somewhere here in front being interviewed. I'll click on the back button right now to go outside of the compound clip. And I'll go ahead and press spacebar. And we can preview this little green screen footage. In this particular example, one more thing to note, guys, I used a still image. Obviously, you can use a, um, a movie clip or animation. You do not have to use a still image. I hope you guys like this tutorial. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. Uh, and if you like my content, please like and subscribe to my channel, guys. All right, till next time, I'm out.